Hello, and welcome to another episode of the 16 Ounce Canvas, the Art of Craft Beer Podcast. Per usual, my name is AJ Kierens. That does not change each week. We are episode four. So our first four pack is being wrapped up here and we could not be more excited to share this one with you. On today's episode, we feature Dean McKeever. Dean is a Massachusetts-based illustrator. We came to learn of Dean through his work with Treehouse Brewing. Dean has done such memorable cans as Juice Machine, In Perpetuity, Bear. He's also done Curiosity 18 through the present. Will depend on when you're listening, when that number is. And many other great ones such as Bright, Single and Double Shot. But it was a real pleasure to speak with Dean, learn about his path, what brought him to this point, how he came to team up with Treehouse, and much, much more. So I think you'll like this one. What I do love about all of our artists is that they all have a unique story. They really have a great perspective. They all work really hard at what they do. And each one is unique. I love the work that Dean has done. He's really grown to be synonymous with, you know, a large amount of the great beers that they've been doing up there. Especially his work with the Curiosity series. Learn how he got started doing that. What he's working on now. His process and just kind of his career path that brought him to be doing artwork for one of the most popular beers in the country. So sit back, relax, maybe crack yourself a cold one. Cheers to you and enjoy. Dean McKeever, 16 ounce canvas, Art of Craft Beer podcast. Here we go. We have with us uh, Dean McKeever. He's an illustrator out of Massachusetts joining us today for 16 ounce canvas. Again, Dean, thanks so much for for making yourself available. Really uh, of big fan of your art. I really like what you're doing, and I just think it's really great. Uh, our, our goal here is to introduce artists, you know, who've really taken the the craft beer game and seen to a new level. And I know you've been really putting out some great work with with Treehouse. And I just kind of wanted to learn, yeah. you know, about your your background as an artist and just kind of a little bit more about sure. you. I do like uh, if you go to you know, keeverart.com will link on the site, but yeah, it's a very uh, yep. mysterious bio. So it's very, yeah. So I'm excited yeah. to kind of get some more <laughs> yeah. information. Yeah. I've, I've been, uh, I've been slacking uh, in the website department, like pretty much every, every other illustrator does for sure. It's uh it's an easy thing to do, go on your website and work on it, but it's just even harder to just sit down and do it. So uh, that's why I got a super, uh, super lax bio there. But um, yeah, I'm uh I'm uh, 30 years old. Um, I went to um, UMass Dartmouth for uh, illustration um, and uh, uh, graphic, originally graphic design, but um, switched uh, to illustration. Graduated um, with my bachelor's um, from there in 2008. Um, graduated and was kind of just out in the world. Um, just, you know, it's an awkward time for anybody, but um, even more so for me uh, as an artist. Um, had no idea what to do, had absolutely no idea. You know, I just, I didn't know, um, yeah, you know, that you, I just thought it was, you had to, you know, make artwork and be in a gallery and that was it. You know, I had no idea um, that you could be a a freelancer and uh, get your hands on some cool projects, you know, like I'm involved in now. Um, But, uh, you know, especially now, you know, uh, fast forward to now, um, especially with, you know, social media, you know, when I graduated, there was no uh, Instagram or, you know, I mean, Twitter, Facebook, those were around, but it wasn't really um, media based, you know, it was just still status updates and people sharing websites. It wasn't, uh, there was no imagery based social media, you know, for, like Instagram is um, a, a huge, huge advantage. Um, and, and I use it as a tool uh, to promote myself, to sell products, to network. Um, you know, so it's, it's just, it's been such a, uh, an awesome thing to, um, have it, you know, my set of tools, um, as an illustrator, you know, I mean, uh, some people use it, you know, just for fun. I mean, I use it for fun too, but, uh, I, I really use it as a tool. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, so got out of college, had no idea what I was doing, you know, fast forward uh, a little bit. Um, I sold cars, I sold pianos, I just did a lot of sales. Um, I thought I wanted to be a tattoo artist at one point. Um, so I, I worked at a tattoo shop uh, for nearly a year uh, as the manager slash uh, counter guy. Um, just learned the ins and outs, um, you know, and that didn't work out. Um, and then I, I uh, was a uh, glass painter for, oh, I don't know, like a year and a half. Um, I hand painted hundreds and hundreds of wine glasses and um, beer glasses and shot glasses for a, a, a large um, uh, East Coast based gift shop. Um, you know, anything from, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Christmas time, Christmas stuff on the glasses to, you know, flowers to, you know, goofy stuff like lobsters. And, you know, it's, it's funny to think back now, but you know, it's, it's all part of the artistic journey. You know, at that time I was like, just, Oh, whatever I can get my hands on. But, um, you know, it, it really did all play into what I'm doing now, you know? Um, so I moved on from there, uh, went back to retail, and, which was not fun, uh, for a little over a year. And, um, at that time uh, is when I made my connection um, with Treehouse. Um, you, know, you know, I would get a, some work from them here and there and got a few more commission, you know, uh, commissions from, um, you know, private commissions here and there, thanks to, uh, you know, social media promotions, specifically Instagram. And uh, then it kind of went hand in hand. Um, once I got more work uh, from Treehouse out in the world, you know, people started following me on Instagram and, uh, you know, then I started getting more commission work. So um, Treehouse definitely, you know, gave me a boost, helped me break through the membrane of, you know, the hundreds of artists who are doing what I do. But, um, you know, it's just right place, right time. Um, and uh, here I am now. So it's kind of a, a long winded response. But, you know, I, I did skip over a lot of stuff, but uh, that's kind of how how I got to where I'm at now. So, no, I think it's a good story. I even mean, I think the you know the the bumps and the bruises that get you where you are I think help. I mean if you go if you check your Instagram you can kind of even just see the evolution, like you're saying as from a business you know how you treated it you know, yeah. your early, your early artwork you can kind of see where you were and just you know this I would say if you look at the last few months it's really you know it's really been kind of a, a well oiled machine and I think that's been yeah you know, and I think that's really for sure. I think that's really great. I mean, I think it's, I think one of the cool things about social media too is somebody who's probably an artist that was in your spot is like, well, how do I become like, you know, do what Dean did and they can go yeah. through and see like it wasn't, you know, this wasn't something that just like popped up overnight, you know, and kind of right, yeah. appreciate the hustle. Yeah. Yeah. It's been um, about uh, five years since I was selling cars and um, I was really good at it. Uh, originally I liked it. I was, I was making good money. Um, and, uh, and then a year went by and then just out of nowhere, I was just sitting there one day and it was like really dead and I had no customers coming on a lot or anything. And I was just like, what the hell am I doing here? You know, I was like, I thought I was an artist, you know, I was still, people would, you know, if someone asked me, Hey, are you, are you an artist? I would say yes, but I wasn't making any art. I wasn't drawing. I was like, this is like my, childhood dream is like slipping away you know and uh i just i i quit i quit selling cars i went back to um the job i had before that which was at um, a local music shop and um you know so i went back to selling pianos and um selling guitar strings and that sort of thing and and but i did that part-time and the other you know and, you know, like 15, 20 hours a week, I would devote to uh, to drawing. So, I mean, uploading stuff to Instagram like I do now, but um, kind of still just floundering. You know, like I would just wake up in the morning, go up to my studio and just like draw. Like, okay, I'll draw this, I'll draw that, you know. And um, even like, you know, fast forward to like when I left the tattoo shop, um, I was solely doing portraiture just portraits, black and white and color, watercolor portraits of people and animals and stuff. Like that's what I was doing for commissions. Like none of the weird stuff I do now, you know, I was still kind of trying to figure out what the hell I was doing, you know? Um, and then I went to the glass painting gig and 
so the like the style I've, I've developed too, not only you know the sort of getting my name out there, um, but the the hardest part is developing my style. You know, I'm still kind of refining it, but you know that kind of colorful um, style that I think people kind of associate with me now. That that's it was even harder to cultivate over the past five six years. You know. Yeah, and I I think that yeah I'm not an you know, art major or you know you know that that versed in it I just know what I like and I just think I think that it's definitely a definitive style how would you describe it you know your aesthetic what's what would be you know how would you I know that's kind of like it's kind of hard to, to put that into words but I, I, how would you describe no, yeah. it? Uh, I, I'm not sure um it, it's it's kind of weird I mean I think what a lot of people say is like when people uh inquire about um commissioning me they uh they say hey you know can you i really like that that wavy style that like wavy line thing you do and like it's kind of funny because like that that is a, a simple version of what it is you know there's like i use like a lot of like wavy colorful lines stacked up value and stuff cutting through skies and houses and whatever you know so um but as far as like a I don't know. You know, you say like uh, if someone does really good portraits and it's realistic, you know, you say photorealistic or if it's really abstract, you know, you, you say it's abstract painting. But I, I guess I would say it is a bit abstract. Um, you know, I there is a, so, a small, you know, slight foundation of, um, you know, uh, perspective and stuff. You know, I don't I don't go like, you know, Tasso and stretch stuff out, you know, the different dimensions, you know, but uh, All right. It's still rooted in the. It's still rooted in the, um, you know, the the ABCs of art, you know. But I kind of have just put my own spin on it, and um, that really is the hardest part. I mean, with the amount of, you know, and I'm not even close to achieving what I want to, you know. But um, I, I have achieved my goal of um, what I call my my five year plan. You know, when I quit cars, I said I'm going to give myself five years to to do this and at that time it was like well i want a tattoo you know so i said in five years i'm gonna be tattooing and then it, and then it morphed into i want to be a freelance illustrator i want to work for myself i don't want a day job i don't want anything i want to work for myself i want to get up in the morning go up to my studio and be my own boss and do that every day and then that's that's what i'm doing and uh i i did it in my um my five-year window so, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of, I'm proud about that. And, um, you know, and, uh, like, I, you know, like I said, it's most proud of the style I've developed because, uh, you know, back in school, that's what they, they, you know, try to drill into your head is, you know, develop a style, develop a style. And it truly is easier said than done. Cause it's just so hard to find a niche style that someone else isn't doing, you know I mean? It's, it's really, uh, it's kind of a trippy thing to think about, you know, and with all the people that are, creating amazing artwork to create in a way that has you stand out, especially in the sea that is Instagram and social media, you know, it's a tough thing to do. Well, you know, I would say keep doing what you're doing. I definitely think it's unique. I mean, that's one of the reasons I was drawn to it. I love black and white, which, you know, I think you do a really great job with, which if, you know, and hearing your story, you know, that's, that was kind of root to me and very, you know, tattoo style, you know, drawings, you know, that, that black and white, but still very, you know, defined lines and kind of yeah. depth. And I think it's really, you know, the thick, thicker lines and the really strong with, you know, without having to have, you know, mold, all these colors. And then you kind of yeah. take that to another place with, you know, a lot of it's nature based, which I really dig. And, you know, then having these strong kind of, you know, vivid color, you know, palettes t together. Uh, and, and yeah, the, the wavy style. Now, what, what do you use to create that? You know, I, I, you know, I, I've been looking and thank you again. Uh, you know, Dean, uh, did a custom piece for me, for, for my wife for, for Christmas and we love it. And yeah, you know, which, was, uh, which one, which one was that? The, the, the windmill, the Dutch windmill. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that 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 was rad. That uh, that one came out good. That was a challenge too. Anything uh, architectural, it, it's the way I compare it is like 
doing buildings and stuff um, is like doing a portrait because you can't really budge anything. You know, if, if one, you know, I don't know what they call it, one of the uh, parts or like the paddles or, you know, the, the, right. <laughs> what do you call it? The, on, on the windmill was like looking kind of wonky, like it would throw the whole thing off, you know? So um, I treat architecture, architecture and um, buildings and uh, mechanical stuff you can't fudge anything. You know, you have to do it just the way it looks in real life. Otherwise you're like, eh, something, something looks off there, you know? So, but yeah, that was cool. I was, I was stoked to do that one for you. Yeah. It was really great. And just looking at like, what are you using? Is it, is it, I mean, I've seen some of your live stuff and we can talk about that in a minute, but you know, what are yep. you using to, to do that? Even just kind of how the moon sits on top of it with, you know, it's, yeah. Um, it's a combination of things. The majority of it is uh, their markers. It's markers. Prismacolor markers is the brand. Prismacolor. Okay. Um, if you're listening, yeah, Prismacolor, you have a sponsor, Dean. Yeah. Oh my God. I wish. All right. Oh my. Because they're, they're not. They're not cheap. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, yeah. Well, that's a new five-year plan, I, right? I, Next five-year plan. Exactly. Yeah. That would. That would be. I. I haven't even considered that. That would be amazing. But. Um, yeah, it's it's Prismacolor markers, um, and then a, just a, a select a, you know assortment of um, black um, mark you know pens for doing the line work, um, and then the white like the moon is sitting on top and the stars and stuff. That's um, paint. That's liquid uh, liquid white acrylic paint. So oh, it's basically wow. watered down. Yeah, like really really thick, but at the same time like runny. You know, like I don't know if you ever like handled acrylic paint, but it's like um, it doesn't like drip, you know, you have to water it down, which makes it a pain in the ass. But the, the white acrylic that I use is like, it comes like, um, uh, like thinned out. So you can just, you can just use it. Um, like that's how I do like the, when I draw my cabins, that's how I like do the smoke coming out of the little chimneys and stuff. Yeah. Cause I, yeah. Cause it sits for me, even looking at it, it just sits right on top of it. It's, it's, I mean, it gives that effect of, you know, the, the moon coming through the, the night sky, which is great. Yeah, a lot of a lot of sure. Thank you. A lot of trial and error with that. You know, I used to like do the moon first, and then like try to go around it, and then you know that there's just so much trial and error. It's it's such a weird medium. Like the markers, like they're right. they're awesome, but they're such a pain at the same time. Um, you know, I, I used to use them years ago, but just they just take so much practice. It's just it's crazy. It's not really it's not forgiving. You know, with a brush, you can you know, apply pressure and do different thicknesses and um, cover it up. You know, if you screw up, especially with like oil paint, you can just go right over it. But the markers, right. I mean, when you're laying, when you're laying those lines down, if you screw up, like that's it, you know? So it's, it's sometimes it's stressful um, to get nice clean, you know, pieces done too, but they're fun. I like them. It's definitely like my go-to for right now are those markers. That's great. Now, is it a base, the marker? Do you do a base color, then do the, the darker lines over it? Or is each wave, it's, it's, that's, the, that's the initial stroke? Um, what I do is I do a pencil drawing, and then I go over the pencil drawing with a very thin uh, black um, pen. So okay. it's like a pigment pen. Yeah, so it, it doesn't smudge when you erase it. So I just go over that real with a real thin line um, and then erase all, all that, you know, the leftover pencil all the way. So I'm left with a very basic um, line drawing. And then I, then I go in with, with color. So, you know, usually I do the sky first, you know, get the, that's usually the, um, the hardest part is to, you know, build up the value and in, in the colors and um, in the sky, you know, it's like the most important part for me anyway, in, in a lot of the artwork I do. Yeah, if that's it's a really yeah. Like I said it's a we're, we're really proud to have it in our house, and so again, thanks, for, thank you for that. We really we really love it. So, and I, what I also like too they, is yeah, that you, oh yeah, I think it's great. I mean, what I love too is all the you know with the Instagram and with all the photos you is the different kind of dimensions that you utilize. It's not always the traditional sizes. You know, I like the really kind of the thin. Uh, I guess almost yeah. like la reverse landscape in a way, you know, I don't, I don't know what the proper term is for that, but I just love that more thin rectangular, especially with the skies. It, that's really, I really, I really love those pieces as well. 
Thanks. Yeah, yeah. That's that's more just like trial and error. You know, I had a, a big off cut piece. You know, from a <clears throat> um, a drawing that you know I, I basically bailed on, and I just there was like a big chunk of just blank paper left, and I cut it off, and I was like, oh, you know, maybe I can use this for scrap or something, and um, and uh, I turned it into like you know a real skinny skinny cabins. That's kind of what I call them. You know, it's kind of turned into this thing where like people like request these weird skinny cabins you know so again it's more more trial and error i just and i've the stuff that like doesn't stick you know i've tried so many different projects that people have forgotten about like i'm always trying to, to do different like um what's the word um not themes but um like projects or you know like a like different category i can't think of the word but like for example like um oh series like a different series right um so like I, I do a I try different series of stuff so like I do I'll do a series of skinny cabins I'll do you know I did I do and I have the series of like the live drawings and I just try to, to do these recurring series that people like come to know and enjoy and expect you know not like I'm just like throwing different drawings of whatever each week you know I try to have these few like a half dozen uh, recurring themes and series so that people not that it's predictable because it's like you know it, each piece is different but it's kind of like oh yeah like oh he's working on cabins this week or he's doing you know like black and white this week or you know that sort of thing yeah i i think that yeah you, you definitely see that i mean and i think like i said before the you talking about the business and using social media as a you know as a as a tool for that i think when i saw that you're doing the the live drawings i mean that's I think that's really smart, and I think it's really interesting. Is it is it Thanks, stressful? Man. Is it yeah, a little more stressful? Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I I really enjoy it. Um, I I think I like I started doing it like not like I do it every Wednesday at nine now. Um, but like I kind of was like, oh cool, I'll give this a shot. Like I, I just happened to be working on a commission. I was like, oh, I'll just go live. Like I'm working anyway. Like see if anyone tunes in and like like people were watching and I was like, Oh shit. Like people actually like want to watch me like color this in for an hour, you know, or like, <laughs> and um, yeah. so it is now that I've turned it into like a weekly thing. It, it is a little bit more stressful. It's not just like, Oh, like I just happened to be on a, you know, Tuesday at six. It's like people like are starting to like, um, expect it. They're like, yeah, they're waiting for it. It. They're like Oh, you know, see, yeah, like, oh, see you on Wednesday, man. Like, you know, stuff to see what you draw. And I'm like, you know, like, last, well, I, did, I didn't I did do it last Wednesday because I was, like, up to my eyeballs in, in uh, work. But I did it Thursday, I did it a day late. And I had, like, steady, like, 25 to 30 people watching for the entire, like, hour-long drawing. And I was like, damn, like, that's it's not a bad ratio. You know, I don't have a, a meager amount of followers on Instagram, but I certainly don't have a massive, you know, it's not like I have 20, 30,000 followers, but uh, to have, you know, under 4,000 followers and I have, you know, 25 to 30 people tuning in, um, taking time out of their day to watch me draw. Like it's, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, it's a really cool feature. And uh, so that is a little more stressful, you know, knowing that people are there specifically to watch me work. And, um, you know, it's not that I'm going to mess up. I'm just like, I don't know, just knowing that there's 30, 25, 30 people like tuned in, like watching what I'm doing. Like, it's just weird and it's live. So it's like, yeah, it, it is a bit stressful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm stressed as thinking about it. Like I, if somebody was watching, even though, you know, I can edit stuff later, if somebody was sitting here watching me, you yeah. know, that was, that yeah, was you know what I mean? Like, that's, it's that's like, Hey, thing. like, even if it's like at your job, like, you know, it's like when you're like, if you've ever like trained a new person at your job, you know, like, it's something you've done a million times. Like, but when it's someone new, you're like, wow, I really have to like tell them everything. And like, right. It'd be overly deliberate. And, like, they're right. watching me. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going to press on. Uh, I think I've done it. I've done it four or five weeks now. And, um, you know, I always, I've, I've sold every drawing I've done and you know, I put it up for sale the next day on my website. And, uh, uh, I don't know if you've tuned in, but um, at the end of the drawing on the live feed, I put up like a like a, a discount code. So the next day, like 
I put it up on, you know, on Instagram that the drawings for sale, but if you were hanging out with me in the live feed, you could punch in the discount code and, and get it for less than someone else, you know, that wasn't watching would get it for. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's, I mean, I think it's really smart. And I think that people are like, oh, why would you want to go live or do that? It's so like, you know, it's always a conversation. Like, have you Facebook live? And it's like, yeah. oh, I would never do that. But then I always think, you know, you know, when I've been thinking about it now, I, I definitely go back to the idea of, you know, you doing that. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's such a way to, it's pretty innovative, you know, just to, I think it's really smart. Yeah. I, yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, I just, with, with each, you know, advancement that comes out in social media. I mean, it's just weird, you know, social media, it's all vanity, you know, and I don't, um, I just want to use it as a, as a tool, you know, I'll post like some personal stuff on my, my Instagram here and there, you know, but, uh, um, I really try to keep it to my art, you know, like I, I just, I want people to be able to go onto my Instagram and just, just keep thumbing just up 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 as, as until they get tired and just it's all art you know all quality art um and i don't uh i don't post everything i draw on there either you know i have a stack of drawings that you know are in people's homes like commissions that i, I never posted not not that i dislike them it's just like some stuff you know i just dump it on my computer and it gets pushed back and you know life goes on but um i just really try to keep using it as a tool, you know, no matter what they throw at me, you know, they say, okay, you can do live feeds. Now it's like, all right, how do, how am I going to use this? You know? So. Yeah. I think, I think the whole distribution model, even just from music and other avenues from businesses, yeah. you don't have to be you know, part of a major distribution channel or have a major label if right. you're a musician, you know, it really, and it does give it that intimate feeling, you know, too, which I think yeah, is really great. Totally. So, so I think that's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Really... Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I just love being able to like, you know, someone's like, Oh, that, that looks cool, man. And I can like see their Instagram handle. I'm like, Oh, you know, thanks. And I just like call them out and people ask me questions. And I mean, it's just, it's free, you know, like why the hell wouldn't I go on there? You know, and I don't know that anyone else is like doing a weekly thing. I'm, I'm not that I know of, but I just usually like, artists i follow will just like hop on here and there and like go live yeah. but i'm really yeah. trying to stick to the weekly thing because i want i'm just i always try to figure out ways to not only stand apart you know from just the massive uh amount of artists on instagram but um i want i, I just try to think of ways to keep people interested in what i'm doing and feel connected to what I'm doing, you know, like it's not just I'm good at art and here's what I'm working on. Like I, I really care about not only what people think about my artwork, but I, I care about, you know, uh, showing my craft, whether it's live or, you know, just on my Instagram, but you know, I, I really want to um, just connect with the people that take the time to um, like my stuff or share it or comment on it and, you know, uh, commission me you know like so it's I, I really that means a lot to me to stay connected with people I'm not going to say fans like I'm not I'm not, I'm not like that but you know pe people that 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 uh, put it bluntly that people that give a shit about what I'm doing you know and I just want to show people like return the favorites like well I care about what you're doing too and I care about your what you think and you know people say hey check this artist out or you know check out my work and uh, there's there's no ego here, you know. I, I always take the time to uh, to, sh to share the love, you know. So, well, I, I like I said, I think it's I think it's great, and you know, I got yeah. turned I got turned on to you because of uh, I, Juice Machine. And that was how I, you know, people. And then I started yeah. kind of just yeah. like you said, I dove in. I was you know going through stuff and yeah. really liked it. And I'm always a big fan of the black and white aesthetic, just kind of in general and. It, you know, I really like it. It's got like the, you know, I don't want to minimize, but simple lines, but then they're chunky. And I really, I just, I think that yeah. that stuff is really what kind of drew me in. Um, Boom, man. Yeah. I, I wish we, a lot of people are, you know, the, the color stuff seems to get, you know, the most feedback and, and love because it just pops on Instagram. Like black and white's tough, you know, right. It just sort of whizzes by when people see it. But um, I don't care. You know, I love black and white stuff. I mean, that's like the, 
the, the backbone of any drawing. You know, if you have weak black and white work, then you really don't have anything, you know, so. Yeah, I, I think it's just great. Like I think it's great because you only have two colors, right? I mean, I, obviously you can do variations. Yeah. And, I mean, to me, shading yeah. is really powerful and just – you know, yeah, you're not you're not using a lot of tricks. You know, it, it's kind of it's just yeah, yeah. It has to stand <laughs> yeah. stand on its own. I think. I mean, it, it, that yeah. that's what drew me, you know, to you. And we are back. The 16 ounce canvas, the art of craft beer podcast, part one of Dean McKeever is in the books. We thank you once again for taking the time to join us. You can check us out on the World Wide Web. It's becoming very popular. 16ozcanvas.com We are also proud members of the Instagram machine. So you can check us out there at 16ozcanvas. And if you're out there and you see some great art, we'd love to hear from you. Hashtag, also known as the pound sign or the tic-tic-toe, 16 OZ Canvas, 16 ounce canvas. We'd love to hear from you. I really am excited to share with you Dean's story. I hope hope it's encouraging, no matter what your your craft is. I think that Dean and David Paul Seymour have a lot in common. Different paths, but brought them to a very positive and happy conclusion. We featured David in episode two. But now we bring to you part two of our interview with Dean McKeever. Remember, you can check out Dean on the web at keeverart.com. You can also track him down on Instagram, username Keever. And remember, you can check him out there every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, where he's been doing these great live drawings. So get a chance to check it out, see Dean in action. But coming up right now, on the 16 ounce canvas, the art of craft beer podcast, we have part two of our interview with Dean McKeever. Enjoy, my friends. If I look back, I, it looks like I think probably Curiosity 18 might have been your first time working with Treehouse. How did you? Yeah, yeah. How did you connect with them? Um, I I uh, I emailed them. <laughs> oh um, yeah. But I I but um yeah I mean, that's really that's the 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 very, very short version. But um, I, I knew that there were like two things I wanted to, to get my hands on. I wanted to do uh, skateboards. I wanted to do skate decks and I wanted to do beer labels because I've all, always loved skate culture. I personally don't skateboard, but I just love skate skate, de- uh, skate, skate deck graphics. Um, and, I, and I've always been a craft beer drinker and I've always admired, um, you know, the, the, the labels. You know, I always loved going into a store you know, having absolutely no idea what anything was other than IPAs, you know, the different kinds, and just buying solely on uh, the labels. It always fascinated me, you know, so I wanted to do labels. Um, I was at my buddy's house in Munson, <clears throat> and um, he was having a 4th of July party, and uh, he was like, you know, you got you to gotta try the treehouse, you know. I was like, oh, yeah, I've been hearing a lot about them, blah, blah, blah. So he gave me a can. It was, it was lights on. And um, at the time, I don't know if you ever saw, did you ever see the original Lights On can? Yeah, it's like a blue and greenish kind of one, right? Like with, it, was, yeah, it had it a was, camping it vibe to it, that, yeah. Yeah, it was something that, that uh, they just whipped up real quick. You know, you could tell it, it right. was just like blue sky, green trees, yellow sun. They just like threw it in Illustrator, vectorized it in two seconds, you know, and, and uh, it, it got the job done. But I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, dude, like, I'm drinking the beer, like just my face is melted off. It's like the best beer I've ever had. You know, lights on is just like still like one of my favorites. And I'm looking at this label, I'm like, dude, like this amazing beer does not match like the label. Like the label is subpar, the beer is out of this world. So I'm like, I gotta I gotta do something. I gotta at least contact these guys, you know. So right. um I went home and I started writing the email and I'm like I don't have any any work to show. Like I didn't have anything online, no website that was quality. Like so, I pumped the brakes. You know, got some cool drawings together, threw them on a website, um, and then went back to Treehouse's website. Um, emailed them. You know, I was like, hey, uh, you know, I, I think you know, I tried your beer. It's amazing. 
um, you know, I'd love to you know, collaborate. I think my style, you know, fits with the, the aesthetic of your brewery. And at that time I was doing like no color stuff, like just the black line work stuff. Like you were saying, you you uh, enjoy looking at like just a lot of line work and um, sent the email off, didn't hear back for a while and um, uh, sent another one just to follow up. And then I finally got an email back. And um, at the time, I didn't know this, but it was it was actually Nate that I was talking to. Nate's like, he's the main man up there. He's the head brewer at Treehouse. And right. I'm talking to this guy like a, like it's just like some kid that works there or something. Like I had no idea. I'm talking to like one of the best brewers in the country, which might have been a good thing because I, I wasn't I wasn't intimidated at all. I was just kind of like assumed it was like for whatever reason that it was just like just some kid. You know or the, I mean? Yeah, the intern um, that answers like the email box. You're right. Yeah, and it was weird because like he wasn't he was very he was just talking like oh yeah I mean, what's up man like the like the emails were you could tell he like wrote them on his phone like everything was like lowercase and like quickly emailed you know so um, he was like your work checked out your work it's cool um, but we don't need labels you know we we um, we don't need anything like that right now and I was like oh shit you know but he was like but um, we need some t-shirts so I was like okay I'll take what I can get so I drew up three designs and sent them to him um and he liked all three of them and paid me for all three of them and i was like flipping out you know um, yeah yeah i was like holy you know i was like really like and like i remember at that time like i gave him a deal like i cut him a deal on the price because like he bought all three again not knowing that it was like this empire of a of a brewery you know what i mean and um so the t-shirts never happened. And I'm like, Oh, I'm waiting on these t-shirts. And like, where are they? You know? And then I get an email one day from Nate and he's like, Hey, check it out, man. And he actually took one of the t-shirt designs that he bought for me and used it as the curiosity 18 label. And he's like, Oh, they, 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 it comes out today, man. Like, let's see how this goes. And I was like, it was like a test. You know, like if people were into it, like he would, potentially want to you know move forward with me uh, trying out more label work and like i'm flipping out you know and um so the, the cans came out like everyone's talking about it like lots of feedback like oh i love like the the line work and this and that and like it's it's cool like you know like just all this awesome feedback and i'm just like blown away and um so he, he just ever since then he just he's, he's always kept coming back to me for for label work, and um, I'm just glad I you know stayed positive because I was I was bummed that he wanted t-shirts and not labels, but right. I was like you know what don't be bummed like take what you can get you're, just, you're talking to Treehouse right now you know so yeah um, so you know and I approached the the, the t-shirt designs like I would anything else I, I worked really really hard on them and um i'm glad i did because he picked his favorite of the three and turned it to a, a you know a curiosity 18 can and um you know that was you know this summer will be you know two years since that happened and uh i got like going on approaching like 30 labels or something like that with them so yeah i was gonna um, say i mean some of the labels you have are pretty I mean, I- iconic. I mean, especially for that brewery. Uh, you know, especially some of these special, limited release ones. You know, in perpetuity. You know, uh, yeah. The, uh, lights, lights out. I think right. That's one of yours. Uh, also, juice lights, machine. Uh, lights on is the one that lights I on. Yeah. Redesigned. It's got the little cabin on it. Yeah. Okay. Juice yeah. machine and, and um, like the bright can. They do bright all the time. Right. And, uh, it's just it's insane because. You know, I, and I've told this story a lot. You know, people are like, how the hell did you get hooked up with Treehouse? I'm like, that's that's it. I just emailed them, right place, right time. You know, and I, don't, I try not to think about the pile of emails that he probably gets from other artists. Like, hey, man, like, you know, let me uh, see if you need some artwork. Like, he probably turns away artists and keeps coming back to me. And it's just like, I just, I just keep delivering quality work. You know, I, I have to, you know, I can't lose this link with Treehouse because it's just like, there's shit. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you're the guy, you know, if you look, I mean, one of my favorites is the, 
is the single shot. I mean, that co- that, I mean, again, it's a cup of coffee, yeah. but it's it's killer. Like it just if you're like, ah, oh, it's a cup of coffee on a can, you know, it, it doesn't do it justice. Like I said, check out the Instagram, you know, handles Kiever. But yeah, that's one yep. of my favorites. I I, I think that Thanks, that's man. Just... yeah. But yeah, yeah I was yeah, I was man. looking. I was kind of blown away. I mean, I I knew like you said the the website is great and the Instagram is kind of just like you can go through the whole history of it. But it's just really, it's really impressive to see. You don't realize how many are yours, and they're just really some some great some great pieces. And I think now they're pretty synonymous hey. with Treehouse. I mean, other than the Man, I mean, even what King Julius? That was you also. I didn't realize that, and that's that's a great one. I did, um, yeah, like the like the triple, like the King. Yeah, King Julius. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. However you say that. Yeah. 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 yeah, The the name the name of the beer is a little ridiculous, but the label is pretty sick. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, I I just think yeah, it's really it's really impressive, and if you haven't had a chance to check out the Instagram, you know, uh, it, it people will really see some. You can just kind of see the whole story. It's just really cool, especially, you know, I went through it uh, today and it was, you know, I'm looking at 18 and just realizing I, how many you've done. Like I said, it's really just exciting to, to see that, to, you know, especially that story. That's been one of the best parts about doing this is hearing everybody's story, how they met the brewery or how they yeah. started doing it. And it's really great. I mean, I think everybody, it's, it's inspiring. You know, I think it just shows, especially – your story, how, mm-hmm. yeah, everyone goes to college for something, but I mean, I, I think most people, yeah. unfortunately, don't go to college for what they're, you know, paying the bills with, and I know you, you yeah. hit a couple crossroads, <laughs> yeah, you hit a couple yeah. crossroads, and, you know, you could still be selling cars right now, you could say, especially, yeah. that's the problem, right, you get to a point where the money's good, and it's like, well, okay, you know, I, yeah. I can make my happiness yeah. outside of this, but then, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, there, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, it, I, I think about, you know, going all the way back to when I quit my job to, to, to get to where I'm sitting right now in my studio talking to you about how right. I come, came to be the label artist for Treehouse Brewery. Like, I was that, I was the car sales guy, like, you know, out there with the tie and putting the, the, the smiley face on shaking hands and laughing at jokes that weren't funny and stuff like that. It's just like, <laughs> I think back to that, that was me. Like, it's like, it, it, it really feels like a, like a, like a dream. Like it didn't happen. It's like, I can't believe that was me. Like, <laughs> well, you do what you yeah. Do. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think that you took a chance too, right? I mean, you like, that was like, you're saying yeah. you treat it like a business and you thought you're like, well, I'm going to give this guy a shot. You know, and you really, yeah, if you had just kind of had a couple more at that party and didn't think too, you know, and just enjoyed yourself a little more than normal and you might not have right. got around to it and might have just been like, ah, whatever. Then somebody, then you, then your buddy would hand you a can the next time you're there and it'd be someone's artwork yep. and you'd be like, what? I can do this. Why didn't it? Yeah. And who knows? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, and it's, I think it's really cool too that, um, that, you know, there, I live in East Long Meadow, you know, I'm 15 minutes from the brewery. You know, I'm a local guy and it's, you know, and I would say before like the, the massive amount of artists that with, you know, two clicks on your phone, you know, you don't have to work with local people. You know I mean? I've done, I've done other label work for other breweries, you know, in California and stuff. Like I've never, never been to the brewery, never might net, not ever go to the brewery and my labels are on the bottles right now as we speak, but it's just so awesome that like they, that I'm local and they, they're 15 minutes from me. And instead of, you know, um, tapping into the Instagram and finding someone else or, you know, you just emails me, I'm, you know, right down the road. You know, it's just, it's just cool. You know, just that, 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 he, that they decided to keep it local and, and go with me. And I, and I don't think it's, you know, I mean, I guess it wouldn't matter. Like if I was from, you know, Florida or something and, my, and I was doing the same work, you know, it's whatever. But I, I just think it's just a kind of a, just a cool bonus to the story that, you know, I live in, you know, a town over from the brewery, you know. Yeah. Now, what is that, what, what is the process for, you know, a new artwork? Because, I mean, you do majority of the curiosities now. 
you've done yep. the, the native one, two, three, and four. Yep. How far in advance, uh, you know, you know, are you getting, is it kind of, we have this new beer coming out? Like, are you the guy you should yeah. be going to to get the scoop on what's the new, new special beer coming out? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I'm, I'm the one I'm working on right now, as we speak is, is something like super under lock and key for, for treehouse. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, but I, I, I don't tell anybody, you know, my fiance, she knows cause, but she doesn't tell anyone, you know, but, um, I mean, it's just like, initially it's pretty, it's kind of funny. Like, um, when I first started doing the labels, like I didn't get it still about like how high, like in demand Treehouse was like, I was working on, um, I think it was like my second label, which I think was a curiosity label. Um, that would have been, um, 21. Um, and, uh, and like I had emailed Nate, um, the head brewer there, um, some sketches and stuff. And I like went up to the brewery and like, I was talking to him and there's like a bunch of people around. And like, again, I didn't know that like these, you know, treehouse fans are like, they're like sharks, you know, they're like frenzy up there. You know what I mean? And, uh, I'm like, Oh, well, did you get those, uh, those sketches I sent over for the, that, uh, the curiosity 21 coming out next week. And like, I said that out loud. And he's like, you, 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 he like shush me. He's like, no, yo, quiet, quiet, come over, quiet. I'm like, well, what's wrong? And I like didn't get it. And it was like, <laughs> it was like this super secretive thing. Like I just had no idea. And like I got in trouble one time too. Not in trouble, but he just like had to tell me like to chill out. Like I was like, um, I did the label for Bear, their their brown ale. Right. And uh, I was like posting all of my process sketches of all the different bear heads I was drawing on my Instagram. And I had all these like beer bros, like, like lurking on my Instagram, like tagging all their beer homies. Like, yo, check it out. He's, he's drawing a bear. Like you think bear's going to drop next week. And then like, I like just didn't get it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, it's kind of funny that like, that was part of the learning curve too. I was like, I knew that they were a big deal, but like I had never gotten my hands on such a big client before you know what i mean to keep it professional and keep everything under wraps you know so um a lot of a lot of learning curve stuff but um uh they they do give me he gives me um you know an email hey i got i need this label or oh you know it's time for the next curiosity you know so we'll throw some ideas back and forth i'll send them like for the um uh for the the native labels um he has a very specific like style guide that he wants right. me to follow, like with the tone background and um, like the last one. Um, last one I did, I think it was it was one with like the beekeeper on the front. Um, okay, that was their their uh, country honey beer is what they called it. So like he specifically said like something based around you know bees, beekeeper, honey, that sort of thing, and. Um, I would send him like loose sketches before I spent, you know, all day drawing it. Um, but with other stuff like the curiosity stuff, like sometimes it was like, oh, just do something cool and send it my way, you know. So um, it really depends. But yeah, usually it's like a week or two heads up, and I just I get really stoked because I'm a huge fan of Treehouse too. So I'm like, it's kind of cool. Like, no, I know what's coming out, you know. But yeah, right. Yeah, anymore. now, yeah. The, so yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, I was up there. Last week I was in Vermont and I drove back and I was like going, I was you know, on my way there and yeah, it gets crazy. I, I've only really gone Wednesdays because um, the other days just, it opens later and just it gets, it's too, long, it's too uh, unknown how long you'll be there for. Wednesdays has usually been pretty good right. to me. But like, yeah, I'm yeah. like driving back from Vermont and they're updating the Instagram. I mean, their Twitter, like we have five cases yep. left. Four, and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to oh, get it. I and I got there and they're like, I think I was one of the last two, and it was like no line. I was like, "This is amazing," you know. But there's other times where I just, you oh. know. But it's, it's yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, that, yeah, it's it's. Uh, how far of a drive do you have? Uh, it's actually not that bad. I mean, I'm right sub. I'm like right below New Haven, so it's about an hour fifteen, hour thirty. You know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. I mean, I'll, I'll. Yeah, I don't. I don't go up enough, but. Uh, it's not your 15 minutes, 
I hope they let you in the back. No. You know, I hope you don't have to wait in line. No, that's, that's, the, that's the weird thing. Like, they, they're, they like, very, very strict up there. Yeah. Um, About, like, who gets what, like, handouts, freebies. Like, I never expect anything. But I uh, I wait in line with everybody else. I love Even that, man. <laughs> no, I, lo- I love that. I mean, that's kind of – that must be – you must know, like, with this – top secret you're working on um you know that's kind of exciting at least you'll know what day to go up there to, to get it you know that type of thing which is cool yeah yeah but it, it's weird you know and like people like don't people have recognized me before but like it's funny it's just like it kind of like i mean it sucks that i gotta wait in line like i really wish i could just like march in there and be like hey, artists coming through you know but again <laughs> yeah, but like uh I, I sometimes I'll be in line and it's like funny like people are like you know talking about it or oh you know, you're like see that label it's rad or like it's just cool to see people like walking out with like cases of treehouse beer with my label slapped all over them. it's like a the first time I, I experienced that it was like such a surreal feeling you know yeah now was that when you first d- was doing that was it harder for you to create like on the a smaller canvas type thing or from your kind of tattoo days or your early days, was it, were you more comfortable with that? I mean, how does that go from what do you send over to them versus what gets on the can? Like, um, well, I, I usually, I, I draw like nine by 12 or smaller for the okay. treehouse stuff. And um, okay. I have a pretty, I got a process obviously, but you know, I basically to put it, Simply, I scan it in and then and then tweak a few things digitally on the computer, and then scale it down to the actual print size of the label. Okay. So I send it over like ready. I send it over ready to print. So the file they get, they just and then just shoot it over to the label printer, and it's it just it's good to go. So, um, yeah. All those days painting on the glass, man, paid off, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's like, it was, uh, yeah, Dean bought a labels, you know, 1.0, and look where you're at now. Uh, during your, like, know, when you're, when you're, when you're creating, do you, like, are you a music guy? Do you kind of just, in your own quiet, what do you, what's kind of the, the scene for when you're creating? Um, yeah, I've, well, I've, I've had my studio in four different places in my house. Um, but now I'm in my final, final resting spot for my studio in my house, which is like, uh, like the best, best location in the world for my studio. I'm just so lucky to have it. It's an upstairs bedroom that I have. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I just listen to music. I got a electronic drum set behind me that I'll, that I'll hop on here and there. If I'm like, you know, having a creative block or whatever. And, um, you know, I got all my supplies right here and, um, you know, I do all my own packing and shipping too, which is, you know, kind of turning into a, a part-time job <laughs> next to my full-time job of, of freelance work. But, um, yeah, I got all my packing and shipping supplies right here and my scanner. So yeah, I'll just put music on, get work done, get shipping done. Um, you know, some days I'm just doing all packing and shipping and emails and, um, you know, really, it really is I'm my own boss. I mean, it's, um, I'm very, um, I'm not hard on myself, but I'm very strict about, um, keeping my hours and, uh, you know, taking no more than 30 minutes to hour long lunch and marching right back upstairs and going back to work. And, um, my fiance is a teacher and, um, you know, she comes home around four or five and, um, you know, I'll have dinner with her and we'll hang out a little bit. And she's in bed by like nine and, um, I go back to work till like one, two in the morning and then get up and do it all over again. So I work long days, um, every day. And, um, you know, it's, it's just what you have to do. I, I think that's just a great story, man. I, I really appreciate you making the time, you know, uh, being your own boss. I am a, I'm a fan of your work again, be just taking time to, be part of this project i'm really just excited to to speak to folks like yourself and who are doing it and it's a really it's a really great story i think on just many levels and it's something that i think hopefully folks who are listening maybe you know obviously some beer fans will be listening but if some 
folks who are artists who are just trying to find themselves and i think just it's a really positive you know it's not easy story but you know you worked your ass off and you took a couple chances and you're 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 grinding and that's that's you know that's where that's all you can hope for yeah man i I, yeah thanks for saying that aj i really appreciate that it's uh it's true though you know the term grinding is is um it's just it's just what you got to do you know um and uh yeah i mean if, if anyone you know i'm People hit me up all the time for um, anything from simple, like, oh, what, what pen were you using to how, how are you, how did you get to where you're at? Like, you know, anyone's more than welcome to hit me up through uh, email or my website or Instagram. And, you know, I'm happy to talk, help people out, um, you know, trade tips, anything, you know. So, like I said, no ego here. You know, I, I want to, I'm here to help them. And I'm also, I try to learn more every day, you know, so never never done grinding and, and never done learning you know you just got to kind of have that attitude and just just keep going for it you know so there we have it episode four is in the books you just heard it from dean mckeever right here on the 16 ounce canvas the art of craft beer podcast i'm still aj Remember, you can check out Dean at KeeverArt.com. Also, Kiever on Instagram. We'll have all the links and information up for you on the 16OunceCanvas.com. 16OZCanvas.com. Same username on the Instagram. So check us out and get in touch. Hey, really like Dean's story. Really like, you know, he took some chances. Who knows? I think there's no what ifs in this story, right? He played out his hand, and it was really a positive one. So we'll be drinking those treehouse beers after waiting in line, sometimes for very long periods of time, but they're delicious. My favorite treehouse beer is Julius, so it'd be interesting if they ever made that. And I know they have a label for it, but a Dean style label, but neither here nor there. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I think it's a great episode. Four in the books, so we just wrapped up package our first four pack. Our beer puns are obvious, our beer puns are deliberate. So coming up next, episode five, this is a great one. Craig Gilbert, you may know him from his work at New England Brewing Company. I'm really excited to share this one with you, so you get a little sneak peek at that. And again, thank you for listening, thank you for taking the time. Tell a friend share us favorite us retweet us thank you you have been listening to the dean mckeever interview right here on the 16 ounce canvas the art of craft beer podcast thank you for taking the time to listen to episode four featuring dean mckeever up next as promised a short preview a teaser so to speak of craig gilbert from new england brewing company right here on the 16 ounce canvas Thanks again, everybody. Until next week, talk to you soon. And now, a preview of Episode 5, featuring Craig Gilbert of New England Brewing Company. I've always been drawing. I mean, ever since I could pick up a crayon and just scribble on a wall, much to my parents' (laughs) annoyance. Um, I've just always been drawing. I've always been writing. And... uh, that led to you know working at newspapers and you know writing and stuff like that, and then illustrating and doing uh, illustrations for newspapers and, and stuff like that, and zines and magazines and uh, and when uh, my buddy Rob, who owns New England Brewing, I've known him since ninth grade, oh, okay. and uh, you know just helping out whenever I could, whether it was brewing, whether it was sweeping the floor, or you know painting something. And then one day he said, you know, hey, you draw, can you draw me a label for a can that we're coming out with? And and I said, well, yeah, of course, you know, no problem. And uh, he said, yeah, it's a double IPA. Uh, Give us some names. So, you know, I gave him like 300 names or something stupid because I'm nuts like that. And and, uh, and he said, all right, we narrowed it down to 10. You know, what's next? And I said, I I don't know. What do you want? He said, what would you pick? And I said... Gandhi bot. 
And he said, why Gandhi body? You know, what is that? And we went through, you know, why and what it meant and all that. And he said, well, can you draw it? And I said, well, sure. And I drew up this picture for him. And, and that's the exact first image on the, on the Gandhi back hand right. was that. And I was like, well, I can draw it better. And he, no, no, we're using this. We're using this. Yeah. So, and that started it, you know, with New England. Music featured on tonight's episode from Tool, Tycho, and Turnover. Hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.